Today in our 2013 Dodge Journey, we're going to be installing eTrailer.com's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver, part number E98845. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. As you can see, you will be able to see the cross tube and the receiver tube sticking out the back here. It's a Class 3 2-inch by 2-inch hitch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your needs. From bike racks to cargo carriers to hauling trailers, it's going to handle everything. It uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with this hitch, but you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com. It features plate style safety chain loops, and it has a decent size opening that should accommodate most size safety chains. It features a 400 pound tongue weight, now that's the force going down on top of the receiver, and a 4,000 pound gross towing capacity, and that's how much weight it can pull behind it. The hitch is also rated to be used with a weight distribution system, however the tongue weight and gross trailer weight is going to stay the same. And you do want to verify in your vehicle's owner's manual that you're not going to exceed any of its towing capacities. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube, it measures about 13 and a half inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it measures about four inches. This is important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. We'll begin our installation underneath our vehicle. We'll have to lower our exhaust, but before we do that, we're gonna place a strap on, so that way we don't have to worry about it falling down too far. We'll now need to remove the exhaust hangers on each side. You'll find two here on your passenger side. We're gonna spray those down with some silicone lubricant to make them easier to take off. There's one on the other side of the frame rail here as well. And then you can just use a pry bar pry those off. Once you've got both off on your passenger side, you'll do both on the driver's side. And now on the other side of your muffler, towards the front of the vehicle, you'll find another hanger on each side. We'll remove this one as well. Then you can lower down your exhaust. We'll now use the coiled fish wire that comes in our kit to route our carriage bolts through the frame. We're going to start with the rearmost hole in our frame here. We're going to feed it down towards the square opening here. I like to stick my finger in there to try and find it because it can be a little tricky sometimes. Once you've got it pulled through, You'll slide on one of the smaller spacers that comes with your kit and then thread on one of the carriage bolts. Poke both of those up into the frame. And use your fish wire to pull it back down. Now due to the limited amount of fish wires you get in your kit, you are going to have to take this fish wire back off so you can reuse it for the next hole. We're gonna do the same procedure we just did in the hole that's slightly towards the front of the vehicle from the hole we just did. Now if you go further towards the rear of the vehicle, you'll have your cross beam here. We're gonna use the hole that's just to the outside of your frame on that cross beam. Slide our fish wire through that hole towards the outside. There's an opening on the end of the beam. Then we're now going to use the large spacer that comes with our kit, slide it on, and then thread on a carriage bolt. Now push that spacer in the frame, followed by your carriage bolt, and pull those down. We're then going to perform the exact same steps to install the three carriage bolts in the same position on the opposite side. On your driver's side, you may have an electrical connector that runs down the frame here. In order to make it easier to get your hitch into place without pinching it, it's not a bad idea to disconnect it from the connector. At the back here, you'll have a push pin that goes in the frame. We're gonna use a trim panel remover tool to just pop that out. And then our electrical connector here is disconnected by pulling outward on the tab and then just pulling it out. We can now move this easily aside to make sure we don't crush it when we're putting our hitch up. We'll now take the wedge spacers that come in our kit. We're gonna put the larger wedge towards the receiver side. And we're just gonna use some clear tape to 
just to help hold this in position because it's going to have to go between the hitch and the frame when we lift it up. So rather than fumble with it in the air, we'll just tape it down. And then you can cut a slit in the tape to make it easy to get your bolts to go through. We'll do that on the other side as well. We'll now lift our hitch into position. Now I left the coiled wire as two come in the kit on the rearmost bolts because those are the ones that go through our wedge spacers with the tape and it'd be difficult to get that lined up properly without pushing your bolts back up in the frame. So we're gonna pull those fish wires down through those bolt holes and then we'll lift our hitch up into position. We need to make sure that we get our bolts to line up with our hitch so we don't push them back up into the frame. We'll then take a nut and thread it on one of the carriage bolts. Once you've got one nut threaded on a carriage bolt on each side, the hitch will hold itself into position, make it easier to install the rest of your hardware. We'll then use the same size nuts to install it on the rest of the carriage bolts that come down. We'll do this on both sides. And now we'll go back and tighten down all our hardware with a 19 millimeter socket. Then torque all of your hardware to the specifications found in your instructions. We'll now go back and plug our electrical connector back in that we had disconnected. Now we'll put our exhaust back up. You'll just see this reverse of how we did it. I like to spray some lubricant on them to make them push on easier. And just lift it up. Slide them right back on. Once all your exhaust hangers are back in place, just remember to remove your strap. And you're not ready to hook up your trailer and hit the road. And that completes our installation of eTrailer.com's trailer hitch receiver on our 2014 Dodge Journey.